What's up YouTube? This is the Wisco Border Channel. My name is Chad. I've got a lot to show you in this video. Welcome back to another episode of the uh, Glass Park Tacoma 14 Restoration Project. I'm ready to hook up the engine uh, wiring harness and uh, show you everything that I've done in the last uh, few weeks here. And there's a lot that's been done. So I got a lot to show you. Hopefully this won't be a very long video, but uh, we're going to start by getting the um, the engine harness here that I have wrapped in this blue uh, hose here. Uh, we're gonna get our connections put back together up inside here, which is the main engine harness plug and the starter uh, positive negative connections. So I'll show you those and then uh, we'll crank the engine to see if the starter even works. Fingers crossed. I'll set the camera up. I'll show you how the, uh, the main engine harness plug goes back together. Pretty simple and then we'll get the uh the two wires for the starter hooked up and uh we'll start testing out all of the electrical stuff that is uh, uh done on this boat i've got lights to show you got the the all-around light the front nav lights the stereo the underwater lights uh, i've got a horn air horn that's uh, that's been hooked up i've got cockpit lights so we'll go over all that uh, here in just a few minutes uh, but uh, let's check the starter first all right, so the first thing you need to do when you're putting the uh, harness back together is to get your uh, harness clamp here put on. So you've got uh, one side that's actually closer, it's actually squeezed tighter than the other side. So you wanna put the side that's squeezed tight or tighter on one side of the plug first. And it can be a little bit difficult to get on there. There we go. Okay. So that is in place on one side of the plug. And then we'll put our plug together. I did put dielectric grease on each terminal. So we'll put our, uh, all right, get our plug back together here. Yeah, get it nice and tight. Okay, then the other side that's a little, that's open wider than this, than the other side, just slides over the other side of the, the harness. And just like that. Okay, so now our harness cannot come apart. And there is a little clamp. Um, down in, in side here that the, that the wiring harness can go into. I'm not sure I'm actually gonna do that because it's just doesn't seem to fit quite right. So, but now we need to feed our positive wire across to the other side to the starter contactor. And the negative also goes underneath the starter to the other side because it gets grounded on the starter mounting bracket. All right, with those more or less fed through to the other side, I'll move the camera over to the other side and show you those hookups. All right, so our starter positive cable is right here. And it's kind of hard to grab onto. It's a little bit, a little bit tight, and you might have to move your harness a little bit further into the case to get that to go on the post. There we go. Okay, that's what it looks like on the post. So I know you obviously can't see past the case here, but we're going to put. A star washer on first. And then we'll put the nut on without dropping it. Okay. And we'll just get this finger tight for now. And then we'll get our negative or ground cable pulled up from underneath the starter there. And this connects 
right here on the starter mount bracket. Okay, I'll get these tightened up. Okay, we've got our positive wire hooked up to the solenoid. Get the little boot put over the top there to uh, protect the positive side of the starter contactor. And then our ground is now connected. We'll go back to the other side. And this is what I was talking about before. There's a little clip or clamp right here that the harness can slide into, but you may or may not need that. It's not, uh, it's not super critical that that gets clamped down in place right there. You gotta kind of finagle things around a little bit. Your starter positive cable is gonna limit the amount of travel that that can go, then that, that that can move. I'll figure that out at some point, but uh, I wanna get the cover plate put back on here. And uh, before I do that, let's go ahead and test the starter because this is kind of a big moment. Okay, we'll climb up inside the boat here. And uh, one new thing I'm gonna show you is I put in a battery disconnect switch here. So the first thing we're gonna do here is turn our battery on, which is just closing that, that contact. Let's go up to the panel here, which a couple new things to show you here. There's the stereo. I'll show you that here in a little bit. It does turn on. The horn, it lights up, but I haven't, uh, I don't have the wiring done yet to make the horn work. But So one thing I already know for sure does not work is the electric choke. Could be the switch. I don't know. Uh, we've got battery voltage showing here. This is new. This is also a uh, USB charger. We got two USB ports in there. All right, so let's turn the key and see if the starter cranks over. Sweet. Okay, that's great news. The starter works. Uh, there's no fuel hooked up to it, no fuel line hooked up to it. Um, I have to troubleshoot the choke switch um, or the wiring, one or the other. Uh, I have to hook up the horn button and after I do that, we'll go through everything else that I've done on the boat electrically. And uh, hopefully, again, fingers crossed that everything will work. But seeing the engine crank over like that is a big, big hurdle for me. Uh, I still don't know if it runs, but at least I know that it cranks over nicely. I knew the engine wasn't frozen because I could pull it with the uh, rope starter. Um, but the fact that the uh, engine cranks over the starter is a fantastic thing. So. Uh, I'll work on a couple more things here and I'll come back and show you everything else I've done. All right, it's the next day. I have everything on the boat completely wired and working. When we turn, we'll turn the battery on. You see, I've got lights coming on on the dash here. The horn button is now illuminated, uh, but I'm gonna start outside the boat here so I can show you the nav lights. So if I pull the, the nav light switch to the middle position, that turns our all around light on. Okay. And then if I go to the second position, that turns our LED nav lights on. Whoops, wrong switch. That turns our LED nav lights on. Shut those off. This and then the top switch here is the underwater lights. So I'll pull those on. have our underwater lights illuminated. Those are super bright. I have the same lights on the big boat, the Chris Craft Thirsty Whale. Oh, that's also new. I think I mentioned that in a video quite a while back that I was gonna replace the uh, throttle um, knob, so that's new. So let me hop in the boat and we'll turn the stereo on and I'll show you, uh, or I'll demonstrate the horn. Okay, this is a uh, Boss Marine audio system. Let's 
we turn that on, you can see the screen there, Bluetooth audio. All right, well, I just realized that the, obviously the Bluetooth audio is not gonna play while I'm, while I'm uh, running a video here. So anyway, the stereo works, sounds pretty good. The speakers back there are six and a half inch speakers. And uh, I mean, for being such a small boat, it will work just fine. And then we have our horn here, which is the air horns. I've got a brand new fire extinguisher mounted. And then uh, got the wires pretty, pretty tidy. And it's not a professional looming job, but there's a ton of wires here with a stereo that are not used. So those are just uh, cabled up and uh, supported so they don't hang down. Uh, and then the other thing I can show while I'm up under here is you'll see this little white box here that's associated with these LED strip lights. Turn those on. So those go all the way around the inside of the cockpit. So those will be nice and bright at night and they change color with the remote. Obviously you can change uh, to pretty much any color you want. So those are pretty cool. All right, so that is the big update. Oh, one more thing. I did, uh, I mentioned in that flagpole video that I was gonna replace the, um, the mounts for the flag with uh, some regular Burgi springs. So. so that's all of the updates that I've done on the boat over the last month or so. Uh, I'm going to try and get this boat launched here in a couple weeks. I'm hoping to launch it over the 4th of July weekend. I know this video is not gonna come out until August. Uh, so fingers crossed this boat will be on the water by the time you watch this video. Everything's, everything's going good. So the next step is gonna be uh, starting the engine, hopefully. Uh, if it doesn't need anything, we'll, uh, we'll get some water filled up in, a, in, a, in that big uh, black trash bin there, dunk the motor down in the water, see if it starts, troubleshoot if needed, and then uh, we'll get the seats installed, and which I haven't ordered yet. I wanna make sure the engine runs before I order seats because that's gonna be fairly expensive. We're getting really, really close. So I'm really happy with where things are at right now. And uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's, it's, you know, when a project comes to an end like this, it's almost a little bit sad because uh, once it's done, obviously I can go out and enjoy it, use it, but then I don't have any projects left in the garage. So I might have to find me another boat. <laughs> so thanks for watching this episode of the Wisco Boater Channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, send me some comments. And if you want to be notified when I post new videos like this one, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating, everybody.